Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another true crime video and this case I'm sure most of us remember happening. This is the Pulse nightclub shooting from June 2016. On June 11th, 2016, it was Latin night at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. This was basically what they did every Saturday was their Latin night and there were over 300 people inside of this club. At around 2 a.m. after the bartender had called last call and they were serving their final drinks of the night, a man named Omar Mateen entered the club. He had a semi-automatic rifle and a semi-automatic pistol on him. At 2.02 a.m. Omar Mateen bypassed security and began shooting indiscriminately at innocent victims in the club. A lot of people actually thought that the gunshots that were being fired were part of the music or something that the DJ was implementing into the song. Not saying that the DJ would have gunshots added into his song, but you know, you're at a nightclub. You're dancing, you're having fun with your friends, you're drunk, you're, even if you're not drunk, you know, you're not automatically thinking that there's a gunman here and that he is shooting at such a fast pace. Then there was a very frightening hostage situation that took place. This hostage situation went on for a little under an hour and over 100 officers from the Orlando area were on the scene. But on the inside, Omar Mateen was still shooting people, people were hiding everywhere, people were pretending to be dead. People who were still alive because so many had already been killed were calling or texting friends and family because they were sure they were going to die. There was actually an ex-marine on the scene who heard some of the gunshots earlier on in the situation and he was able to allow about 70 people to escape the nightclub because from his military experience he recognized the high caliber shooting sound and he knew that something was just absolutely not okay. So people were hiding in the bathroom and Omar Mateen actually fired a bunch of shots through a closed door into the bathroom killing at least two people who were seeking solace in the bathroom. Then he ended up entering the bathroom and wounding several other people with his gunshots. At this point when he was in the bathroom Mateen's gun actually started to jam and so he wasn't able to shoot for a moment but that is when he switched from his rifle to his handgun. People were shielding themselves with other club goers dead bodies. It's just such a horrific horrible, horrible situation, and I forgot to mention this, but Pulse is known as a LGBT nightclub or like a gay club. So it obviously seems that he was targeting the LGBT community, which is so sick. During the attack, Mateen was heard saying that he, quote, didn't have a problem with black people and he, quote, wouldn't stop his assault until America stopped bombing his country. He also supposedly claimed to these terrified people in this club who are still living that he had explosives on him. Now amazingly, by 2.09 a.m. Pulse Nightclub had posted on their Facebook page, keep in mind this is seven minutes after the attack began, that everyone should run and get out as fast as they possibly could, but by then it was too late for way too many people. Omar Mateen himself made a call to 911 at 2.22 a.m. in which he made it very clear that he was a terrorist. He talked about the Boston Marathon bombers and talked about how they were his homeboys and how he had no problem with them and he enjoyed what they did. And while many other patrons who were trapped inside of the club during this hostage situation were calling 911, Omar Mateen ended up calling 911 two other times. And by 2.45 a.m. Omar Mateen ended up calling the local news station in Orlando and said, it's me, it's the shooter. He began speaking rapidly to them in Arabic and said that he was carrying out the shooting on behalf of a terrorist organization. And he also claimed on this phone call that this shooting was triggered by an American bomb in Iraq that killed an ISIL leader a little over a month prior to this shooting. Police were on the phone with Mateen trying to negotiate with him for over an hour and he claimed to the police at one point that he had a bomb strapped to, to his body and that no one should try to enter the club or else he would set that bomb off and kill everyone including himself. And something that I found extremely ironic but also really really sad is when I passed the Pulse nightclub when I was in Orlando I actually noticed that pretty much right next door was a hospital 
So a lot of these people who were wounded, if Omar Mateen would have given up sooner or surrendered to the police sooner, so many more people would have been able to make it to that hospital and survive. Orlando police were finally able to get into the building at 5.02 a.m. So this had been going on for three hours. And apparently right before this, Omar Mateen entered one of the bathrooms again and actually ended up killing a man who was trying to save a woman he was with. At about 5.07 a.m. was when police were finally able to success Successfully fully enter the nightclub and they used flashbangs to distract Omar Mateen while other officers shot at him and killed him. And Omar Mateen was reported as down at 5.17 a.m. after over 150 bullets were fired by about 11 officers. This is the part that really fucks with me. So 50 people were killed in this attack and that includes Omar Mateen. So if we don't include him, 49 people were killed by him in this attack and another 53 people were injured. 39 of them were pronounced dead at the scene, and that's including Omar Mateen, and 11 were reported dead at the local hospitals. So since 38 victims died at the scene, something that I found to be insane to wrap your mind around is that 20 people died on the stage and in the dance floor area, which was basically where Omar Mateen shot as soon as he entered, died right away. As much as I don't like to bring too much attention to the perpetrators of these crimes, I'm still going to tell you guys a little bit about Omar Mateen. He was 29 years old at the time of this attack. His parents were from Afghanistan, but he grew up in New York as a Muslim. Strangely enough, he lived almost 120 miles away from the Pulse nightclub at the time of the attack, so he drove like over two hours to do this. So right before the shooting happened, Mateen had a lot of very angry Facebook posts. Apparently in these post he was vowing vengeance for the US led strikes in both Iraq and Syria that had been occurring recently. He really did believe that this attack he was perpetrating would somehow have an effect on America's stance in the Middle East and he really truly thought that by telling like the news operator and the 911 operators this attack was due to the US strikes in the Middle East that you know that would somehow cause them to stop. There was a man who went by the name Miguel which is not his real name who came out after this incident and stated that he had an affair with Omar Mateen for a few months and Omar Mateen was married to a woman and this man was a Latino and claimed that he had given Mateen HIV. Even though Mateen's autopsy results showed that he was HIV negative, he was still really pissed off that he may have been exposed to HIV and this could also be another motive for him attacking the Pulse nightclub because it was a gay club and it was Latin night. And crazily enough, Mateen had actually been to Pulse nightclub before. And according to other club goers, he was kind of antisocial and he'd kind of sit in a corner with a drink in his hand and wouldn't really seem to be too comfortable with being there. Maybe he was very troubled about his sexuality and um, he was also known to use a few gay dating apps. And apparently he did try to talk to men and pick up men while he was at Pulse. So it seems that he really had an issue with his own sexuality which is really heartbreaking but obviously that's not a reason to go and do what he did. Now on to some happy things. So there is a amazing beautiful memorial at Pulse nightclub. In November of 2016 just a few months after the attack the city of Orlando purchased Pulse nightclub for about two and a quarter million dollars and vowed to turn it into a memorial and that beautiful memorial was unveiled this year. Unfortunately when I was at Pulse they were still constructing the memorial so that's why everything was tarped off but I think it's absolutely beautiful that the city purchased the property to make it a memorial for those 49 innocent people who died that night and that's pretty much it on the Orlando Pulse shooting my feet are falling asleep thank you so much for watching <laughs> remember to tell your loved ones how much you love them and I will see you in my next video bye